today I'm just feeling kind of country. And so I decided that I'm going to show you one of my recipes. This is just to add water meal, okay? And I came up with this recipe. It's a country breakfast skillet made with hash browns, sausage, and scrambled eggs. And all of this is just add water, okay? Here is my mason jar, four cup size, and the wide mouth funnel. And I'm going to be putting the ingredients in here just to show you that first, first step. And you can use this as a food storage or you can take it on camping. I wish I had, uh, you know, the fire pit down here and, and all of that. Just to make it more authentic, I'm going to have in the background some bird singing. This is actually my little bird in my front yard who comes to sing for me every single day. I think he's a mockingbird. So that'll be kind of fun. All right, so let's get started. The first thing that goes in the jar is two cups of dehydrated potatoes. And I'm gonna use the actual hash brown variety. They have this at Costco and it's just so great. It already has a little bit of salt mixed in. All you do is add water to this and kind of let it set up and then cook it. So it works really great. I've got my reconstitute recipe on here. Um, really simple. So two cups of this. And this has already been sealed. Sometimes you can just pry them open with your hands. Oh, there we go. Oh no, I'm going to make a mess. Oh yeah, I make a big mess. There we go. <laughs> Two cups. Okay, and we need one cup of freeze-dried sausage. Yes, I said freeze-dried. And actually what I have is TVP, which is really just fine. It's got a great flavoring to it. I'll let you look at this. It's kind of like crumbles. It's almost like Bacos. Uh, and you can just eat it straight like this. It's crunchy. It's very good. So once you reconstitute that with water, it's going to be just like brown ground sausage. And when you start getting your jar filled up, it may look like that's all you can fit in there. But what you're going to do is just kind of twist from below. Kind of pound it on a countertop or something. And that'll help you... Uh, get it to settle down. Okay, so now we have plenty of space to add a little bit more stuff in here. We're gonna sprinkle some salt and pepper in here and some onion. And you know what, I don't have a measurement on the onion. This is enough to feed probably six people, maybe four adults. So you just kinda, one, two, three, four, that's fine. <laughs> and some salt and pepper. You won't need too much because, like I said, that already has a little bit of salt on it. Okay. Now, we're going to leave this just like this for a moment. I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to put the rest of my ingredients in the Ziploc bag because it just needs to be separated. We're going to have two different cook times, um, so that's the reason for that. We're going to start with some scrambled egg mix. This is a dehydrated egg powder that you can reconstitute into actual scrambled eggs. Okay. This is the brand of egg, egg scrambled egg mix that I'm trying out today. It's um, Essentials. I know it says Essentials, but the actual website is BePrepared.com. I purchase a lot of things for my food storage from them, uh, for my dry mixes and everything, and it is pretty good. I haven't tried their scrambled egg powder yet, so we're going to give it a try. As far as I know, for the measurement, I'm going to go for one-third cup of the powder. Okay. Oh, here's the bag. All right. Next ingredient is some freeze-dried cheddar cheese. Now, I do actually make my own dehydrated cheese. And this is in granules because I use it to make homemade macaroni and cheese. And I'm going to use this today because I don't want to open a number 10 can of my freeze-dried cheese. So this has been sealed up, and it should still be good. I'm going to give it a try here. 
Okay, I'm gonna use the lid to help me open this this time. I'll show you another little trick. Get over here where it's narrow and you just kind of crank it. There we go. And then that way you don't hurt your fingers or you don't damage the lid either. Okay. Smells like cheese. Actually, it smells good. <laughs> Sometimes cheese tastes, uh, smells a little weird. <laughs> no, this is great. And it's still dry. It's very low on oil content because when I made this, I blotted all the oil off. So it's, um, it's totally fine to dehydrate your own cheese if you know how. All right, so I need one third a cup of that. I can just stick it in here, I guess. This should reconstitute and melt and get gooey for you. And that's gonna just mix into our eggs to give it some more flavor, a little bit more creamy. Okay, one third cup of freeze dried bell peppers. You know what? I'm going for dehydrated bell peppers today. The freeze dried stuff is so expensive. It's a little bit better texture wise, but you know, it's totally fine. Okay. And the, oh, I already had one where it was mixed. That's all right. In fact, where it was diced. You know what? I'm going to use that instead. I don't want to use the strips in this recipe. This is diced. So that's going to be easier. Little flakes, basically. Okay. About one third a cup of that. And some freeze dried mushrooms. I love mushrooms in my. Um, what are they called? Omelets. <laughs> okay, and, oh, lid. Duh. Here we go. I love this trick. Come on. Oh, this one doesn't want to go. Oh, there we go. Ah! <laughs> Found lids everywhere. Okay, two tablespoons. Freeze-dried mushrooms. And I'm just guessing. Okay. I think you can just eat these plain. Who just eats dehydrated mushrooms plain? I do. <laughs> All right, and then the last ingredient is your seasoning choice. I'm going to use Mrs. Dash Original Blend. You might want to put Italian seasonings in it. You might want to put cumin. Um, you might want to do chili powder or something like that. That would be really good. Anything great that you would normally put in your... Uh, omelet, for instance. And this calls for half a teaspoon. Here we go. So this is meant to season the egg portion. You already have the seasonings and salt and pepper on your potatoes and sausage, of course. Okay, so then this little baggie you seal up, just like that, and you stick it in the jar with the other ingredients so that you can have this all in one place if you get all the air out of the bag, it will fit in there just fine. Okay, close that back up. And make sure it's down about half an inch or so from the top. Because when you use your vacuum sealer, the baggie is going to expand and it could prevent the lid from sealing. It might cause the lid to kind of pop off. So let me show you how I seal my jars. My husband figured out for me how to make this. I have my attachment here, uh, food saver attachment. Put that over top of the, the lid. Okay, and then this tube is the one that came with the machine. We jimmy rigged it, country style, to this other tube to make sure that it would fit <laughs> uh, so that we could make it get bigger and then fit on this here. This is called a blade, uh, brake bleeder, okay? And some of you who work on cars and everything, you might know what this is. Uh, but it has a pressure gauge right here and we wanna get it up to 20 PSI, okay? So you just start squeezing it. it doesn't take too long. This is how I get really strong arms. <laughs> up to 10. You can switch arms if you want. Oh, come on. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, we got a little more ways. 
I'm going to, I'm going to work on just my left arm here. So I, I know my right arm is bigger than the left arm. So might as well slowing down a little. You can do it. Oh, I got to switch. That one took too long. Oh no, I pressed the, oh, I pressed the release valve right there on the end. Dang it. See my right arm's a little bit stronger. Almost there. Now the reason I use this, obviously, is because it only costs like 10 bucks. I didn't have to spend over $100 on a vacuum seal. Almost there. Those last few little seconds kind of took a while. Last few little notches. And then you pull out this plug. Okay, and then that allows you to be able to remove the lid. And if everything went properly as it should have, you can see that this lid is attached on there really nice. All right, and that's going to be hard to get off unless I do my little trick and everything, and it will be vacuum sealed. And then, of course, you put your ring on. So that is how you get it ready for your camping trip or to put on your shelf for long-term storage. If I remember that right, this should last more than five years, maybe even ten years on your shelf, just like this. All right, so in a moment, I'm going to flash back here. And we're going to cook this up and see how yummy it is. I hope it's yummy. <laughs> Haven't made it in a little while. I'm sure it'll be great. I'm back. So let me tell you, let's pretend, obviously, that we're out at a camp out or something. We're on the prairie. And, you know, we just tied up the horses. Oh, yes. I totally want to do this. Anyway, and it's time for breakfast. All right. Probably what you would have to cook with is a kettle, you'd be using the fire, and maybe you'd have a um, Dutch oven or something like that, maybe a cast iron skillet, right? So this first step that I'm about to show you is not gonna require any cooking per se. We're gonna start with boiling water, okay? And you know, when you're out there in the wilderness and everything, you want your food preparation to be as easy as possible. So that's what we're gonna do first. I've pulled out of the jar this baggie, and you can see that it's been vacuum sealed. All the air has been sucked out of there. All right, so let me open that. First thing that you need to do is take the jar with the hash browns and sausage and dump it in your skillet. I don't have the heat turned on yet, though, okay? And then I'm going to take four cups of boiling water and pour that over top just to get this kind of reconstituted and that's going to sit there for about 10 minutes. For the egg portion I need to dump this into a mixing bowl. You want to add cold water so that you don't cook the eggs yet. And then we're going to whisk that and let it set to reconstitute a little bit. The egg should start to dissolve in the liquid, so you want to give it a good whisk. And if there are any little chunks that you see in there, it's, it's probably the dehydrated cheese. And it gets just a little bit thicker as it sets here. I went ahead and turned on the heat, and I have not drained off any of the excess water. There's just, well, a good amount there. Um, the potatoes are almost completely reconstituted. This one here. The potatoes are reconstituted. They're nice and soft. So what we need to do now as we continue to cook is get this all browned really well. Okay? There's a little bit of fat and oil that's coming off of the sausage. And that's going to help this to not stick to the pan and to help brown the sausage. I mean to help brown the hash browns. So my recipe actually says to drain off any excess water. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that before I lose any more of the, the flavoring from this meat and everything. All right, so I'm gonna get this all spread out here so it can start to brown. And the trick is to not touch it so that it can start to get a nice 
crunchy bottom to it. Crunchy bottom! <laughs> and you could add some butter to that to help it brown or if you wanted the flavor, but obviously if you're out camping, you might not have butter. I know this is the only bowl I could find. Sorry, it's kind of messed up. So you can see the cheese there and hopefully once it starts to get hot, it will melt and get soft. So I'm just going to spread this and leave that be and then I'll start turning it in a minute with my spatula. That looks good. I hope it turns out great. It's time to start trying to turn this over. I have it on really low. I could probably... Oh, that's looking good. I could probably leave it just a little bit longer. Like I say, I've not worked with this um, scrambled egg mix before. I've used other brands. I've tried it with egg powder, dehydrated egg powder, but it's it doesn't work quite right. So it is good to make sure that you have a special scrambled egg mix. Nice and brown there, nice crust. Ooh, it's smelling so good. They feel a little bit spongy almost, a little bit more firm kind of than regular eggs, regular scrambled eggs. So we're going to see what this tastes like here in a minute. And just to make it feel totally authentic, I decided to come out in the wilderness. <laughs> I know, it's like I'm camping under my peach tree and the weeds. <laughs> it's totally great. The wind's blowing, the birds are chirping, and I'm going to taste this and let you know how it turned out. <laughs> well, I'm really hungry, and it is really good. Um, the sausage is nice and soft, the potatoes are nice and soft, it has a little bit of a spice and pepper to it. Don't need any ketchup. All right, let's try these eggs. You know, the cheese did finally start to melt and it's not crunchy. Nothing's crunchy in these eggs. It's really nice. So anyway, thank you so much for watching and please subscribe and please check back every week for more cooking videos. Okay guys, bye.